G'day everyone, Viv here from Knights of Dice. I hope you're all keeping well. Uh, we're in my garage at home. Uh, I find this a very comfortable place to make videos and I'm hoping we can start doing a lot more of these. Yesterday I posted up some pictures on our Instagram and on our Facebook and you can find links to those in the descriptions below. Um, of some shipping containers and some dumpsters that I painted. Uh, they're very quick, simple projects to do. We use those techniques in this coming tutorial quite a lot at the studio. Uh, we get people asking all the time, how do you paint this, how do you paint that? So it's time now to start allocating some time, either at home here in the evenings or at the studio, to start filming um, some of these uh, sort of tutorials. So you can, uh, you can you know, get your stuff painted. Nothing looks worse than just unpainted MDF. And it can be painted really quickly and really easily. Um, anyway, so there we go. This tutorial I filmed on my phone. I didn't have a camera there. All the equipment was at the studio. I, so I filmed this on my phone on like a little clamp thing on the desk. And you know the sound's not very good. The sound reverberates a little bit when I touch the desk a little bit. So it's not fantastic. But you know, for the sake of not having to do it again, um, here it is. So I understand the sound's not good, but you know, you can. It's it's watchable. It's watchable. Here we go. Let's get on with it. Thanks for tuning in. So we need to assemble the model first, obviously. There's the little MDF dumpster. And um, let's go spray it black. That's the first step. So I haven't shown the actual process of me spray painting this. I mean, it's fairly straightforward. Um, we use a British Paint Spray Easy. This is a flat black spray uh, paint that we get from Bunnings. You know, it's about eight bucks a can, but it's a very, very good uh, primer. We uh, tested all of their primers. They're all the different flat blacks, and this was the best one. You can buy cheaper ones, but you know, we prefer this one. I then uh, base coated it with a colored primer. In this case, I used the German Field Gray from the Bolt Action range, range of colored primers. You could brush it on. You could airbrush a, a color on. Um, it's really your choice. We use a lot of these colored primers because they're quick and simple. I prime them black as obviously I didn't show you how to prime them black. I think that's fairly self-evident. And then I sprayed them with a, a colored primer. Now you could brush that on. You could airbrush a watered down house paint. I just used that spray because that's what I had on hand. And you know, I just want to get them painted, right? Painted terrain is better than unpainted terrain. You can sort of see a little bit, hopefully that sort of the black sort of still shows through a little bit. I'm not trying to achieve a complete, like, solid color. This is enough for the moment. Now the fun begins, you know, dry brushing this and, 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 and weathering it up. Um, I'm going to use this uh, Hammerfall Khaki from uh, P3 to dry brush this. I just want some really high highlights on the edge here because this will be dulled down quite a lot when we come around to weathering it. I have decided that I want different colored lids on my bin. Now, if you go around looking in your area, you know, bin, these sorts of bins come in all different sorts of colors. They generally have a different color bin lid. I'm going to do it this dreadful camouflage green from Game Color because it was the first paint that my hand reached on the stack of paints up there. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'll see if I can set the camera up. I'll paint this on and, you know, we'll come back in a minute. Okay, first step is to put some of this terrible, terrible color onto uh, the lids of our um, dumpsters. Now, I'm just using an old brush and... You know, I'm not terribly concerned about how neat we are. Again, it's going to be weathered and all that sort of stuff. I do want to take some care that uh, you know I get the edges of the lid sort of somewhat clean. Okay, so I'm I'm pretty much done here. You can see that my color kind of maybe is not entirely solid. It's not entirely flat. And there is a little bit, you know, my brush strokes are pretty heavy. You can sort of see it there. The paint is heavy in some parts. None of that matters. You can see on the right hand side here, the paint's a little bit streaky. None of that matters. I mean, this bin is going to be sitting outside. Well, it would in the real world. And you know, these lids are going to be stained. They're going to be faded. It doesn't matter, right? Um, now we'll just let that dry. I'll do the other one. Once we've done that, then I'll come back and I'll dry brush the whole thing with some of this uh, uh, Hammerfall Khaki from P3. Now, once again, you could use any color paints that you want. Okay, so I'm using, like I said, the Hammerfall Khaki paint from P3 and a round, stiff bristled brush, which is normally what I use for dry brushing. Um, and, you know, we just want to dry brush it, right? So we want to catch all the edges. Now, these, br these brushes are cheap, shitty brushes, excuse the language. So I'm going to get some um, 
bristles that come off but that's alright then you can clean those up so we want to go through and just dry brush the whole bin so one thing I see um, well one thing I think might be a problem for some people is dry brushing like a flat surface that doesn't have any texture you can sort of see the difference between these two models here the one on the left has been dry brushed a little bit and the one on the right has it. All I've done is the edges on this model which you can see there and obviously you can see there you can see the difference in the shade on the side there. Um, and now this is why I use a round brush normally when I dry brush. You do want to make sure that the brush is dry and you jab it onto the model while you're twisting and turning the brush. And you'll know if you've got too much paint on there because you know you'll be able to see very defined brush strokes. Now all of a sudden you can see that you know the shade has changed a little bit. And that's what I want with this dumpster because when we come around to chip this and we spray our weathering spray on there and we start putting oils and stuff on there, that little bit of lighter colour is going to uh, you know really help us. So there we go. Um, I'll finish up the dry brushing on this second model and you know then we'll be ready for to, to start putting some chips and stuff on this and you know really making it come to life. So no doubt you're all familiar with this technique. I've basically taken a little bit of black paint. Now you could use any color you want. In this case, I'm just going to use black, you know, just yeah, because why not? It was, the, again, another easy paint that was right there. Um, and, a, and a little bit of sponge. Now you could use some sponge from your blister packet or, uh, you know, an old kitchen sponge or, you know, an old piece of pluck foam or something that's fallen apart. You can see I've used this one already. Um, we just want to rip the sponge up a little bit and you know sponge on a few chips dip it in the in the paint you know sponge it off a little bit and then you know just gently touch it on the model where you want sort of your chips to be now the more paint obviously that you've got on your uh, on the sponge Obviously, the more chipped the model is going to be. If you if you you're not you're not happy with that, you know, just keep dabbing your sponge off until you know, like a dry brush, you've got you've got little paint left on there. For me, maybe there's probably a little bit too much paint on here, but at the end of the day, most of the stuff in on our tables for our Batman games, are, you know, they're fairly heavily weathered, so. How much paint you've got on your sponge and how much you push it onto the, the model is, is, is going to have an influence. You know, touching areas where you know that the, the paint's going to the chip or, the, or the, the object's going to become damaged. Like on the sides here where the, uh, you know, the forks come in to grab the container, they're going to be damaged. The top of the lid and all that sort of stuff. And, and one thing to keep in mind as you're doing this, you know, you, you are going to get paint on your fingertips, so um, just be aware when you're rotating the model around that, you know, that you could be picking up wet paint, which your fingers will deposit on uh, other areas of the model. You know, that's about, that's about all I, um, I'm happy with that. Now, if this was a, 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 a metallic object, you could come back with some metallic paint and you know do the same thing in this case you know this dumpster it could be plastic i'm just going to leave it as it is we'll see i might i might come back and uh, and do it again so there we go that's fairly simple it just helps to give the model some some definition and some detail i'll do the other one and we'll come back with the the next step okay so we use a lot of this stuff in the studio now they're weathering sprays by the plastic soldier um I think there's, there might be more colours. We use these two, dirt brown, light brown. Um, the dirt brown is obviously uh, a much browner sort of colour. And the light brown is, you know, mm, I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain. It's not quite a tan colour, but um, it's, it's, it's hard to explain. Um, I use the dirt brown predominantly around the base of models. Where you might have rain splattering up on the bottom of stuff. And the light brown just as a general misting. Now this stuff I think is designed for weathering tanks and vehicles. Um, it can be cleaned up with water a little bit. Um, uh, when dry, wipe some off flat surfaces with a slightly damp cloth or cotton bud, leaving wash trapped around profusions and in recesses. 
So, you know, I spray it on and then you can clean it up a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and use this some of this stuff. Okay, so normally I do this stuff outside and we've been joined by my, my daughter, Charlotte. Charlotte, how are you? Good. Good, you like to paint models and little men, don't you? You do. Um, so this stuff stinks to like high heaven. Um, do it outside. I'm doing it in my um, airbrush uh, station uh, in my uh, painting area that you know vents outside and stuff. But you know this stuff still stinks. So when I'm doing uh, the base of models, I like to do a little bit around the base. I normally spray this onto the ground in front of the model and just let a little bit kick up around the edge. And you'll see that sort of it shades the bottom part of the miniature or in this case the model. Now like I said before this stuff can wipe up and clean up so if you do spray it onto the edges of models it's not too much of a problem again we're, we're trying to create some dirty bins here so you can see now we've got that you know that line around the bottom I'll generally just give it just a gentle spray on top again this stuff you can clean up and you know there we go we'll let that dry get that out of the way bring the other bin in do the same thing around the base a little bit on top and we use this stuff like extensively on our models now I might come back with that light brown a little bit and just dust some of this on there it gives it just a slightly different sort of shade of brown on the other one and there we go I'll let that dry and we'll be done we'll throw some graffiti on this bin come back with just a little bit of that uh, weathering powder to weather the the graffiti in and we'll be done let's see how I go here with a toddler on my lap um, whilst we try and do this so <laughs> here we go so what do you think Charlotte um, we need to do this one yep. you're right we do need to do that so you can see the one that I'm holding in the right here has been done or the weathering has been cleaned up you can see how the lid is you know cleaner than the one on the left so this is what I was talking about before with the cleanup process. It's just a little bit of a Q-tip or you know some uh, a, a damp rag, you know, a bit of water, wipe it off, and uh, let's see if I can get this in shot here. So you'll be able to quickly see, just rubbing it with a Q-tip, you know, it starts to take away that material. And the more you do this, the more it will take away, and then you can start to blend and feather it in with your finger and. Keep as much of it there as you want or take away as much as you want. And obviously if my Q-tip can't get into the corner, you know, that, that material is going to stay there. So. I can't get through. Can't you? No. Nope. Oh, you'll, have, you'll have to wait, sweetheart. So there we go. So all we're going to do is keep doing this. Maybe a little bit of tissue paper to clean up as we go. And trying to clean up and leave as much of that weathering powder wherever we want it and cleaning up wherever we don't okay so now that we've cleaned up our um weathering spray you know wherever we want to the last step is to add some simple graffiti graffiti now you can buy some wonderful graffiti stencils you know there's quite a lot of them around in various different modeling communities um antinosity's workshop does uh, some very nice ones um and we use those on a lot of our buildings just want to clean up a little bit more of this on this corner here not happy with so just a wet q-tip you can see it pulls a little bit a little bit of tissue paper take up that excess there we go cleaned up that corner a little bit wasn't happy with that anyway so yeah, the last step is to add some graffiti now we use these little mini Posca pens it's just a little paint pen yes sweetheart come in and uh, you know it's just a little matter of it has a tiny little point on it you know we put some graffiti on there yes sweetheart come up here have a look we're gonna do some painting on these little dumpsters. You wanna watch? Yeah. Okay, so let's move the camera down here a little bit. Yeah. And all we need to do is just, you know, put some squiggles on here. So shake this up. And you know whatever, right? So let's just some sort of random little squiggle. I mean you could write words or whatever you want on there. You know, I'm not a graffiti person, so 
Um, some sort of random little smiley face. And we've got all different sorts of colors. So, you now I wanna put some of this yellow. The yellow's a nice color. Now, one of our, one of our lasers is called Kong. And, um, that appears on a lot of our terrain. One of our lasers is called Kong, the other one's called Aldo, one's called Caesar. Um, so there we go. That's really all we need to do is just, uh, you know, cover it in some graffiti. Just a couple of pieces is nice, maybe a little black one. Now black won't look good because we've we've chipped it. Maybe some of this pink. It's my favourite. Is it your favourite? Yeah. There we go. Right, so while Charlotte enjoys her Pringles, this is the last step that we can do. I use this water-based woodcraft stain from Cabot. You get this from Bunnings. It is reasonably expensive. You know, they've got them in all different sorts of colours, but it is kind of somewhat similar to the Army Painter Quick Shade, um, although that's an oil-based uh, stain. This is a, an acrylic water-based stain, so you can, um, you can clean this up um, with water. And, you know, it's just a matter... Oh, where's my little opener? Thing going. I don't know, let's just use this. This is not my preferred colour. This one's a little dark. You can get them in all different sorts of colours. Um, and you know, it's... This I use for, you know, just a, a couple of little shrieks. Let's get the camera down here. You know, just... If you have a good brush, like an old brush, that doesn't have a really, you know, fine point on it anymore, you can get some really nice streaking. Now, this is not my streaking brush. That's at the studio. But... You can do some stuff like that. When that dries, that'll look quite nice. Um, just clean it up a little bit. You can thin this with water and it's good for making grime and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, there we go. I might put a few more of these on here, then we'll take some pictures and, and, and call that um, finished. So thanks for following this far. If you have, I know the sound was pretty ordinary, but you know, next time it will be much better. Couple of lovely little dumpsters. Looking forward to doing more. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye.